Okay, 10 things that will make you a better, faster runner. And these are 10 things that I embraced in order to get better at running and to go from running a four hour 25 marathon to running a two hour 21 marathon. Number one, run alone. If you get pleasure and if you get spirit from the community, great. But if you can run alone and embrace running alone and spending time out there on your own for hours at a time, you're gonna tap into not just the physical and the physiological benefits of running, you're gonna tap into the mental side of running, which for me is the biggest part. And it's gonna help you with the running, but also with the rest of your life. And I'm talking about clarity. I'm talking about perspective on your life, on the people you work with, relationships you have, on the world. It's massive for me, and it's the reason that I love running so much. Number two, run first thing. If you can build it and hardwire the habit that you lay your kit out the night before and run first thing in the morning before you have breakfast, so you earn your breakfast, it's gonna 10 times the productivity from those runs that you would do if you left it till later on in the day. And so you get into the habit of lay your kit out, hydrate, go out for a run, earn your breakfast and maybe your coffee as well. And it is a superpower. If you can get that to work for you, you're gonna move forward way quicker, which is gonna make you a better runner, it's gonna make you a faster runner, and then you're gonna enjoy it more. And then you're into that positive feedback loop, which is incredibly powerful. Number three, test yourself regularly to see where you're up to and how far you're getting with your running. It might be a time trial that you do on your own, or it might be a local race, or it might be a really big race that you're doing with other people. But if it's in the diary, it's gonna hold you accountable for your training. It's gonna make you a better trainer because you've got something in the not too distant future that you, you feel like you want to perform. It's gonna get you out of bed. It's gonna keep you motivated if that's an issue for you but it's going to let you test yourself as to where you're at at the moment, and what you need to change in your training to move forward even faster. Number four, do what you love. Now your training plan may say that Wednesdays is interval session and Sundays is long run. And on Saturdays, it should be an easy run. But if you love park run and you love being part of a community, then get that in the diary and have it and try to be disciplined with it so every single weekend is not you going all out and trying to run as fast as you possibly can. Try to use some of them as training so that you're moving forward progressively over the week. Don't try to go as fast as you possibly can every Saturday. It just doesn't work for very long. The same thing if you love a local trail but it's not super smooth and flat, flat and it shouldn't be your recovery run but it gets you out there because you absolutely love it go and do it. And exactly the same with races. It might not make sense in the bigger picture. It might not make sense in the training schedule, but it gets you out there and it gets you falling even deeper in love with running. Number five, don't listen to music. It might get you out there initially, but the sound of the nature, the sound of people, the sound of your own footsteps, your own breathing and feeling your own heart heartbeat is something that if you can embrace that it's going to be more meditative in the long run than you kind of zoning into some kind of music and you might be the type of person that that music gets you out there and in that case if it's working for you great but if you can get into the rhythm of your own breathing the sound of your own footsteps listening to the river and the birds it's just another world and again it's extremely powerful Number six and number seven, focus on your sleep and give your sleep as much respect as you give the big sessions, the big interval sessions and the long runs. If most runners, if they just focused on getting enough sleep and high quality sleep, they would move forward with their running and they would become better trainers. It's exactly the same with reducing your stress. If you've got the sleep working for you and you're getting enough hours per night, that you need in order to function in your life, but not just to function, to thrive, and your stress is reduced, it's going to those two alone are the fundamentals, along with diet and hydration, and, and those things that are going to push you forward and allow you to train optimally to move forward. Without those two things in the way, you're gonna come up into more injuries more quickly. The biggest, biggest cause of injury is lack of sleep. Eight and nine rest and recovery. Again, if you put 
as much emphasis into your rest and recovery as you do into your faster sessions and your longer sessions and the gym work and all the other aspects that are moving you forward, again, you're going to become a better runner. Most runners move forward, move forward, move up, and then take a step back because they get ill or injured. And then their journey becomes like that. So it's kind of like a graph of the stock market when in actual fact, we want to be moving forward, a smooth, constant progress so that you're in that positive feedback loop and you don't associate running with illness or injury. It's all about forward motion. It's, is it possible all the time? No, you're going to naturally have setbacks because of the way that you're using your body and the way that you're repetitively moving over the ground. Of course, there's gonna be setbacks. It's about minimizing those and rest and recovery along with sleep and reduced stress are the way that you do that. Number 10. Embrace delayed gratification. You're not gonna get fitter by next week. You're not gonna get fitter in three weeks unless you're brand new to running. But the athlete that you're looking at, the running body you're looking at, physically and physiologically, and ideally mentally, three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, is a completely different body, an athlete. And if you can embrace that delayed gratification, especially in a world where that gratification can be instant from social media, etc., it puts you into a frame of mind, both with your running and the rest of your life, which is extremely powerful and it's a great tool to have. There you go. There's 10 things that will move you forward, maybe 1% or maybe 0.1%. But if you put them together, the results can be exponential. And again, you're looking at a completely different athlete six months from now, if you put those things to work from you. It's about embracing the long-term journey and becoming a better trainer, becoming a better athlete and realizing that that's an, not an overnight process. It's not gonna happen in a training schedule. Yes, you will move forward in 13 weeks, but you're not gonna become a completely different athlete. Once you start to put multiple things to work for you that are moving you forward, maybe it's your strength training and that impacts your ability to run fast over the ground in your intervals. Maybe that then impacts your ability to run far um, specifically at your race pace for an extended period of time. Those three things alone can move you forward. Imagine if you've got more of those things to work at. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you got anything from it, please like, comment and subscribe.